Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everybody? Latif here. We are on episode nine of Good Night Freestyle. I want to thank you guys. I mean, yesterday, really, the numbers were up there. So many of you guys uh, got on. I don't know if it was because I'm doing a better, a better job or that we got uh, further distribution with Spotify and Stitcher. Um, we should be getting on iTunes soon. We should be getting on iHeartMedia soon. Um, uh, Breaker, there's a, there's a lot of platforms that we're hoping to um, get on just to so that way more people have the opportunity to listen in. A lot of people don't like to download extra apps if they don't have to uh, download the apps. I understand this. I barely, I'm always deleting apps. The apps that I have on my phone are exactly the apps that I use all the time. I don't have the apps that just sit there. Uh, they annoy me or sometimes they don't let my other apps fit but i wanted to make sure that we um that we uh, we're hitting our platforms that you guys are, already have i know a lot of people especially in the music business are, are down with spotify so that's cool so we're on that now so you can listen to us from spotify you can share it Whatever you guys can do to uh, spread the word, man, it really means a lot to me. I um, I see everything. I'm on social media. I watch you guys. And I try to, if I don't say thank you or give you a heart, it's probably because I did not see you. Um, so I apologize. So, But I, I don't care if you share it a hundred times. I'm going to try to say thank you a hundred times That's because I do appreciate it. I know you don't have to do that. There's a lot of other people asking for that type of help. Um so I really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. So um, today was a pretty decent day. Worked on a couple of contracts. Um, it's still kind of uh, on the slow end, but um, it's starting to pick up now. Uh, February is going to be pretty busy. Uh, yeah, it's going to be. I actually, I don't think I can take any more shows in February. I think we're locked out. Uh, so now we'll start working on March. I already got a March first that we're working on let's see what happens with that i don't know um and uh what else we have uh going on as far as for the shows that is pretty much it i have a couple um i have uh the vlog series um i just started batching so i will be dropping those real soon once i start dropping them i will not stop so i have a new system um anyone who does vlogs realize it's a lot of work man you really gotta know what you're doing and you have to be patient, patient and you have to be consistent. So, uh, but I love doing them and I love the information and I love the feedback, man. I get so many emails, I get so many comments. I get people to stop me when we're on the road. Um, I just want people to know that I am literally trying to give away information to help you consider possibly a career in the freestyle music genre i believe that there's a ton of opportunities in it there are so few people working this this uh uh this game man it's just there's so so much more opportunities you know the key though is you can't look for people to put you on that's the key you can't be like, well, nobody wants to put me on. There, there's no such thing as that. And most of the people that you want to put you on are still trying to put themselves on. They're still hustling. They're tr still trying to do their thing. I know. I, I'm the same way. I'm constantly. I get up in the morning and I'm hustling. I'm doing my bookings. I'm doing my management. That's my regular nine to five. But there's other things that I'm trying to do. So I'm still hustling and I'm still going for mine. So it's hard for me to put you on. But what I can do is try to point you in the right direction and give you whatever information I think you you might know. A lot of people will not do that. People are scared of competition or scared about 
you know, somebody taking their gig. Listen, if anybody can take my gig, then you deserve it. <laughs> you know, I've been doing this a long time. Uh, what's so funny was, um, I don't know if any of you um, um, follow me on LinkedIn. Uh, I've had a LinkedIn account for years, but um, I started getting notifications. Congratulations. Congratulations. I'm like, congratulations. I'm like, what? For what? So I went in and I followed um, and I'm, I'm seeing all these uh, congratulations. And it was 29 years in the business with law entertainment. Okay. So, um, it was crazy. It was crazy. So it just made me think 29 years, man. I remember telling people I was, I've been in the business 10 years. I thought that was a long time. 29 years. Nuts. It's nuts. It's something for everybody to, to, to think about. But as I was saying, you need to create your own opportunities. Forget about calling Latif and saying, yo, man, do you need help with your artists? Or do you need help bookings? Do you need... You know how many people contact me and this is what they tell me. They say, Latif, if ever you don't want to go on the road, you can't go on the road, um, you could call me. You know, you don't even have to pay me. I'll go on the road. Come on, man. <laughs> really? <laughs> so, first of all, the girls will look at me like I'm crazy. They'll be like, who, who the hell is this? <laughs> so, um, I appreciate it, though. I, you mean well. <laughs> but, yeah, listen, I've been doing this a very long time. Ask Susie how many days I called in sick. I've been with her longer than I was with the cover girls. So, I had them call in sick. I go on the road with the flu. I go on the road with pneumonia. I just go on the road. I never allowed a gap. See, that's the key. You can't allow a gap. You know how many people wanted to go on the road? All I had to do was take a day or two off, take off one show or another show, let somebody slide up in there, and next thing you know, I lose all my value, you know? But with Susie, it wasn't even like that. With her, you know, I we go back so many years. Remember, I've been with her since she was five years old. Me and her father are really, really close. Um, so I've seen her. I've been a part of her growing up and a part of pretty much every aspect of her career. So she's like my little sister. I'm very, I'm pretty overprotective. Most people can tell you that the way I am with her. Um, I didn't have a, I have a, a little, a younger sister, but we didn't grow up together. Um... I think the other closest one might have been my niece, who's pretty much close to uh, Su Susie's age. Uh, but we weren't, you know, they, we lived far from each other. So, you know, I grew up, or pretty much, I grew up too around Susie. So we've been together a very long time. Um, and we still are, you know, and uh, we're best friends. We're best friends. We, uh, you know, I love her to death. But um, anyway, so yeah, so I never allowed that. I never allowed that gap. Same thing with the cover girls, you know. Um, I didn't want to allow that gap. It's not about opportunities, giving other people opportunities. It's a job, you know. It's not just what you think it is. You guys got to realize, I mean, anybody who manages or really road manages, okay. Because remember, I'm a manager, but I also do the job of a road manager. Now, there's a lot of managers out there who do not go on the road, okay. Um they'll book the shows or they'll handle everything from the office but when it comes to the actual road work they won't go they'll get paid for it but they'll get a road manager give the road manager a couple of dollars that's it i worked at that capacity for a minute you know when i took over our management i could have done the same thing i could have assigned a road manager to both little susie and the cover girls but i knew the value of my position i knew what i was doing first off my primary bread and butter was and still is as a booking agent. So whereas I manage and book the girls, I am also a booking agent for every other artist that's out there. Non-exclusive, of course. I used to do some exclusivities. I don't do that anymore. Um, just the responsibility and what both sides expect from each other. Um, so I don't do it, you know. Do I recommend exclusivity? <laughs> I do. I really do, uh, for the sake of the artists. Promoters need to know who to call. If promoters are calling an artist and calls the wrong person, there's a good chance that that person is going to lose the gig. 
Very simple. If you're calling me, I don't do that though. As an agent, I always service the promoters with what they want. So if someone calls me for Cynthia, I'm not going to go and bump Cynthia and try to put Susie or Angel or the cover girls on. I won't do that. I will service them with who they called me for first. And then once we have, we, we established a really good relationship, the show went well, everything went good. A lot of times the next step is they ask me, who would you recommend next? See, the first act is the act that they wanted. The second act, they, they want some help. And by that time, I was able to, um, by that time, we were able to create a, a pretty good relationship. So anyway, um, I'm sorry, guys, my, uh, my dog somehow made his way into my office and hopefully he doesn't start barking. And hopefully he doesn't get mad that I keep calling him a he because he's really a she and I've had her for many years and for some reason I still call her he and everybody gets on me. Maybe, I don't know, maybe because he's he's black and um, I would expect a, a, a female dog to be, uh, I don't know, pink. So anyway, so where was I? Okay guys, so anyway, but anyway, so that's the deal with that and um uh just want to to bring that out and let you guys know um you know how we're looking uh, everything else is looking pretty good this dog is really gonna mess with me at this point okay yeah so yep that was a dog i just had to get him out anyway um what else so okay yeah so today got a little uh i got a little ticked off on something uh, Non-freestyle related, but, um, well, kind of it is because it affects me and I'm part of this freestyle thing. Anyway, <clears throat> um, I made it real clear before, gained a little extra work weight over the years. Um, man, I'm embarrassed to say it. I'm not even going to say my weight. I'll let you guys guess. Matter of fact, I'll let you guys guess. <laughs> What you think my weight is? So I'll let you think about it. But anyway, so this is bad. My treadmill broke. Okay. Now I haven't been on it for a while. So when I finally got on it, um, I, I called the, the company that I bought it and the warranty expired not too long ago. So I kind of got screwed on that. Uh, paid, I don't know, paid about $1,000 for it, $900, something like that. So anyway, I went on and I went online and I wanted to just kind of check a different treadmill. Now, I wanted to get the treadmill that slides under my desk because my desk is a standing desk. I, I Right now I'm sitting, but I have it where I can lift it. And I have a rubber mat, so I pretty much stand all day long. That's the way I like to work. I don't do it for any health reasons, even though it's better than sitting. I do it because I'm more comfortable. I love to stand up when I'm on the phone or if I'm working on something. I only sit when I'm a little tired, then I get back up, okay? So anyway, I went on Amazon, and I started to check for the treadmills. And, you know, I saw they started at like $299. And what they are, I don't know if you guys have ever seen them, they're basically a treadmill without the handle. So they just kind of slide halfway under your desk. So you can get on your computer, especially with me, I do a lot of writing. So sometimes I can, I can stand at my desk for an hour or more straight, just typing away. And I type crazy, like I type really fast, you know, especially when I get in the flow. In the beginning, like if you're standing there staring at me, I'll be, I'll be real slow, but if you give me a little time or if you catch me by myself, I'm, I'm like, I'm going, I'm going off. I'm, I type really quick and, and I actually type about as fast as I can think. So if in my head I have uh, some sort of dialogue going on, or if I'm working on a novel or whatever, I can actually type about the same speed that I'm talking and I talk out loud. So, <laughs> so if you envision that it's a crazy situation, but anyway, so I figured the, 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 the under the desk treadmill would have been perfect for me. So I said, okay, cool. So I saw one, I said, 299. I said, that's not bad. I said, it, it looks sturdy. I said, I might, might look at that. But before I, um, 
before I, I looked any deeper, I said, let me, let me check the weight. <laughs> so I checked the weight and it holds, uh, two, the limit is 220 pounds. So I said, damn. I said, damn, man. This was nice. This was perfect. I said, okay. So I got back on the computer. I go on Amazon, type in standing desk or um, tread, desk treadmill. I forgot what they call it. Under the desk treadmill, whatever. So I start looking and I see another one. Okay, this one's $4.99. So I said, okay, all right, cool, $4.99. Went from $2.99 to $4.99. Okay, I could do it. Let, let's, let me go, let me go check it out. Let me get, let me check the specs, because this one's looking like really diesel, it's kind of thick. I'm like, all right. Weight limit, 290 pounds. Mother! <laughs> but anyway... <laughs> So I said, okay. So I'm going to give away my weight without me even giving it away. You guys are going to figure this out. Just do the math. So I'm like, damn, man. <laughs> so I get back on Amazon. And I start typing away. I start looking. At these. Now they're getting dope. These things, like now they have the remote control. They have LED lights. I'm like, well, I don't need all of that because they're going to charge me for that. And I'm not trying to pay. I just took a beating on a treadmill um, that I paid a G for. So I really didn't want to pay that much again. So I found another one. <laughs> so, so I said, okay, all right. This was $699, $699, no arms. It's cool, no lights either, no LED lights, but it does have the remote. Now I didn't notice if the first ones had the remote, cause I'm like, how do you start if you don't have, so maybe there's a switch, so what do you gotta do? You gotta turn the switch on and then jump on the treadmill. That sounds kind of dangerous, but with the treadmill, I can, with the remote, I can understand. I could kind of work that one. I said, okay, $6.99. So I go on there. I said, first place I went, I said, man, this thing has got to, I, this has got to be the, the right weight, the, the white, the the right weight limit so i went in and it was not this one's limit was 320 pounds <laughs> okay so <laughs> so of course i'm thinking to myself it's like damn <clears throat> i need to get a treadmill so i can lose weight to buy a treadmill <laughs> so so I went down, I started, I said, man, now I'm all pretty much discouraged at this point. I'm like, man, you know what? It's like the universe isn't allowing me to lose weight at this point. Like, you know, it's like, it's almost like discrimination. It's like the fatter you are, the more money you got to pay. This is what was real crazy. This was what was pissing me off too. When you looked at the models on these treadmills, they were like, you know, good looking, sexy built or, or, you know, female models, man. It's like, they didn't need a treadmill. They don't need, that's probably why the, the, the treadmills, the small ones are cheap because they really don't need them. They just, they, I guess they buy them just to say, Hey, I, I have a treadmill. We need them, but you need a lot of money. So the treadmill that I finally found that held up to 360 pounds, like I'm like one hamburger away from 100, 360 pounds, 360. Okay, that one they want $1,299. I was like, oh man. So now <clears throat> I didn't purchase it because I'm thinking about it. I'm like, okay, for that money, I could probably just go back to my gym. That'll cover my cost for a whole year. The only reason, <coughs> the only reason I canceled the gym was <clears throat> is because we never went. We basically, we donated the place. Really, they need to, we need a section, a Mercado section, because we we pretty much built, and we've been here over 10 years, and we've been members of that aquatic center for over 10 years, and I swear, if you combine the amount of times that we've been there, it's probably been a year. So we've already invested about 15, maybe 20 grand into that place. And when I talk about, Membership, it's just not me and Angel, okay? The membership was always me, Angel, Adam, Erica. And then when Adam had his kids, we put them all on the on the thing. 
So we had everybody on there. I forgot how much I was paying a month, but you know, it was a couple hundred bucks, man. Maybe like two, two something. I, I don't, I don't know. But so it was kind of, you know, and it made me think. I'm like, wow, you know, it's like this is like discrimination. It's like, okay, you know, we need it. We need the treadmill. If anything, it should be the other way around. These skinny people, they don't need it. They probably don't even get on it. They they probably just have it there. So it's like, yo, this is cool. It goes with the rest of my equipment. Because you got to see how skinny they were on these pictures. It was crazy. They, they did not need it. We need the damn thing. So if anything, they should even have like, they should be free. If anything, they should be free for us. They should do something like McDonald's should sponsor them, you know? Where they, you, you know, you give your little card and if you clip and then like after, you know, 500 hamburgers, you win a free treadmill. Anyway, so, oh, wait. Okay, I just got a, I just got a text question. Oh, it's from my boy Tommy again. Okay, all right, Tommy. All right, Tommy, you go. All right. So he said, Latif, I just finished your book, Freestyle Promotions. It was awesome, but I do have a question about it. The question is, after the show, when the artist does the meet and greet, do they get paid for that? Or is that something they do on their own time after the show? Okay, a pretty good question. I, if you guys don't know, <clears throat> I have a book on Amazon. I, I released a couple years ago called Freestyle Promotions and the Seven Simple Steps to Getting Started. And it's a very basic guide that will kind of walk you through the whole process of booking shows. So if you have any interest or you ever thought about putting together a freestyle event, um, this will show you how to pretty much put it together so you could go into these clubs. Trust me, it's pretty lucrative, you know. I've worked with a lot of new promoters, and I've been in the back room with them while they, they counted off their 30000 that they made for the, for, the, for the night. So it's pretty typical, you know, um, for them, for those, for those people. You know, of course, that's, you can end up doing it and, and take a hit. I don't know. But the experience that I've had with these promoters has been pretty good. So but anyway, let me answer this question real quick. Uh, again, he said, uh, after the show, when the artist does the meet and greet, do they get paid for that? Or is it something that they do on their own time after the show? Well, okay. A lot of artists do not like to agree to a meet and greet on paper. Okay, and I'll tell you why. Because until we get to the venue, we really don't know what to expect. If we go to a, an event, if we go to a club or a concert, and it's, it's all asses in there. Like, everybody's drunk and acting stupid. No way are we going to stand there and do autographs. It's too dangerous. Especially situations with me. I travel with women. Pretty good-looking women at that. And a lot of these people can get a little too chummy. And it gets very awkward and very uncomfortable. And it can get very dangerous. And let me tell you something. I'm not just talking about the guys either. I think the girls are worse. I've had more girls hit on my girls than the guys. Most of the guys are respectful. They might get a little annoying. They might be get a little drunk. But the girls think it's okay to touch somebody's ass. I'm serious. So I've had to remove more females from a meet and greet than I have guys. How crazy is that? So, so anyway... <clears throat> When we do an autograph meet and greet, we want to do it. There's no, we don't want to do it. We want to do it. So we're hoping that everything runs well. We do not charge for this. I don't put it on co in the contract, but I don't charge for it. What I do is I coordinate the meet and greet with the promoter. When we do a sound check, or even if we don't do a sound check and I end up going to the venue, we scout the, 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 the club, if it's a club, and we find the perfect place. A lot of times the, the promoters already know, like before I get there, they tell me, well, this is the area we're looking at. So <clears throat> we'll have a spot and I'll go there and I'll kind of see. Now I've done probably thousands of these meet and greets. So I can actually, I can mentally put my girls into that meet and greet and look at how it would operate. The first place that I want to know is 
Where are the people coming in from and where are they leaving? If the fans are coming in from one from one section, like they might have us like in a VIP section. If there's only one entrance and one exit, there's going to be a problem. We have to think of a different way of doing it. A lot of times we might not even be able to bring them into the VIP. What I would like to do is bring them in, let's say, from the girl's left side. So there'll be an entrance there. They come through, they do autographs, they do pitches, and then they keep going and they go out, out, the, out the section. So that's the ideal place. Now, that's the first thing I do. Now, there are artists that do not like to do autographs. I don't agree with it, but whatever is their career, they could do whatever the hell they want. Then there are some artists that will do autographs as long as they are autographing merchandise that you purchased or that the fans purchased. I don't really have a problem with that. We don't do it though. Listen, it's business, you know, wrestlers do it. Um, athletes do it. A lot of people do it. Um, I don't really like to do it with, unless we have legitimate merchandise that we're just doing. But the times that we have brought merchandise, which we don't do anymore, I sell a lot of stuff online. So the times that we have brought merchandise, I always brought a stack of five by seven photos that people can still get autographed by the girls for free. So just because we have t-shirts or whatever else we have or CDs, we don't do that anymore. We also had pitches, five by seven glossy pitches that they would autograph to you. And that was absolutely free, no charge on that. So you didn't, you weren't obligated to buy anything, you know? So that's how I did it. But yeah, there's some people that would charge. Um, now, <clears throat> you can set up a deal. Sometimes we'll go to a festival and the festival might have 20,000 people. Okay, and then what the promoters want to do sometimes is they want to charge. They're gonna what they're gonna do is they're gonna have a backdrop. They're gonna have the fans line up one at a time. They're gonna go. They're gonna take a picture with the artists, and then when they get off the off with the picture, the photographer gives them a card, and that card gives them access to the pictures that they have to purchase. Times like that, we get paid. We'll work out a deal. It's very, very seldom that we do this, but the deal now is with the promoter. It's not with the fans. We don't charge the fans anything, but if they're charging the fans, we'll probably take a piece of that. But again, that's not, um, we don't do that much, you know? Um, when we're doing benefits, uh, we'll do like a free license on the t-shirt. So that way the, the benefits, they can make their money. So, because we have to pick and choose benefits. So we can't do all benefits that call. We have our own benefits that we choose to do. If not, we'll be doing benefits every week and we can't do that. So we have to pick and choose. It's a, it's a hard decision to make. Um, I'm usually the one that's, that's, that's my job. Um, it sucks, but when they do, but most of the places that do benefits, they, they have sponsors. So the sponsors will call the, the talent, we'll pay the talent. And then what we do as a give back is we'll do uh, a free license on the t-shirts. Um, and a lot of times they can make a killing. We did one place. I think they made something like $7,500 in just the t-shirts alone. So, and I think the, it was like all profit because I think they had the t-shirts were actually sponsored from another company. So it worked out. It worked out. So that's how we do that. So just to answer your, your question, Tommy, um, not typically, no, usually artists do not charge for the meet and greet after the show. Okay, and I do recommend uh, to do a meet and greet if everything works out. So, anyway, uh, all right, guys. So that's pretty much it for now. Um, I have a few things to say. I just wanted to uh, um, to uh, to reach out and say thank you for everything. So again, we are. This is episode nine. Do me a favor. Um, go to www latifmercado.com and lock that site in have that site that site has access to me um i have other things i'm going to be doing with that site i'm going to have some free giveaways there's a bunch of stuff a lot, a lot of stuff i'm going to do is going to, i'm going to be working on it pretty much over the, the next few few months from there you could get on the podcast you could check out the blogs you could 
read my blogs. I don't know if you guys have ever seen my, read any of my blogs. If not, go to latikmacado.com and there's a link there that says blogs. Go there. Uh, and also uh, the podcast. You could uh, connect with the podcast from that site as well. So don't forget to do that. Um, other than that, is there anything else I need to say? No, that's it. Um, we might have to protest all the big boys and the big girls. We have to protest these uh, tr- these treadmills. <laughs> so, but um, anyway, until tomorrow. Thank you. God bless, and good night, freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.